Journalists can face many dangers for their profession. Two men set upon Cashin, breaking both legs, fingers and his jaw. An attack that has left him in an induced coma. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst countries for reporters. It is hard to describe how heroic these reporters are. For this list, we're focusing on countries with the most hassles, restrictions, and notable incidents aimed at members of the press. This means that the government is aware of about 80 different threats to kill journalists. Whether because of issues of censorship, the overwhelming fear of violence, or government-authorized crackdowns, some nations pose a distinct threat to the media. Foreign observers say the 12-year sentences in a labor camp are much harsher than expected. Many had speculated a conviction would lead to five or ten years instead. Number 10. Syria. Even with improvements, restriction and imminent danger are still clear parts of the climate in Syria. From 2001 through to 2011, Syria's media law allowed the state total control over print and other media, which included the power to veto reporting on certain topics. And that, Mohammed Sayyid says, is why he has to be the voice of the voiceless. For decades, the media in Syria was state-controlled. While rectified to an extent in 2011, the law still allows for restrictions in reported content and does not actually protect journalists from arrest, despite what it states. In addition, the ongoing civil war in Syria has placed countless journalists at risk, with 28 journalists said to have died in 2012 alone. After Stephen Sotloff became the latest journalist killed by ISIL, should media organizations be doing more to protect and support freelancers? Number 9. Cuba Here at the Listening Post, we've covered media stories all over Latin America, Argentina, Venezuela, Brazil, Ecuador, and Honduras, to name just a few, but we've never gone to Cuba. It's a notoriously difficult place to get accreditation, let alone talk to journalists. All media outlets within Cuba are managed and controlled by the single-party government. Privately owned media outlets are strictly prohibited in Cuba, with freedom of speech and journalism only being permitted to those who avoid speaking ill of the country or its policies. When Fidel Castro came to power here in 1959, he was only too aware of how important the role of state media would be in propagating the message of the revolution. In support of this ideal, Cuban law dictates that journalists can face long-term prison sentences, a noteworthy example being journalists taken captive in 2003 who were only released eight years later. I was condemned to 20 years in prison in Cuba for practicing journalism outside the control of the Cuban state. Of these 20 years, I completed seven years and four months. Number eight, Azerbaijan. It's time for that to stop. It's time for there to be real consequences. Threats of violence and arrests on political grounds are common for reporters working in Azerbaijan, to say nothing of the government's more extreme practices. 20 security guards from the Sokar oil company attacked the Azeri independent Mirror Daily reporter Idrak Abaskov. It said that the state authorizes invasions of press organizations on a regular basis, in addition to concocting tax evasion charges freezing bank accounts and other efforts to undermine journalists. Look, Azerbaijan, you cannot have it both ways. You can't scream out to the world, notice me, notice me, and then decide to be a dick to journalists. You're a country, not Shia LaBeouf. The Azerbaijani government has even conducted a crackdown on journalists, resulting in the 2014 arrest of investigative reporter Khadija Ismailova. 39-year-old Khadija Ismailova was found guilty of a range of economic offenses, including embezzlement and tax evasion. Her supporters say the case is politically motivated. Number seven, Ethiopia. Uh, so all the interrogations basically related to her activities as a journalist. Ethiopia's lack of independent broadcasters is questionable enough, as is the tendency of the country's only telecommunications company, the state-owned Ethio Telecom, to regularly suspend news sites. However, it becomes outright troubling for journalists when one considers the Ethiopian government's condemnation of six anti-establishment publications for allegedly promoting terrorism during the lead-in to the 2015 elections. And no one tries, no one should try to use the media for negative and destructive purposes. That's why we have now a section of the media 
which respects the law. Topped off with the jailing of reporters, freelance journalists, and bloggers alike on terrorism charges, it appears Ethiopia isn't a very media-friendly place to be. Well, these were clearly not uh, terrorists. These were two established journalists working for a magazine called Filter, doing a story about a Swedish oil company. Number six, Iran. We are very sorry that these journalists came to Iran as journalists, but unfortunately they've been uh, involved with activities which our security people consider those activities definitely beyond journalism. According to the Committee to Protect Journalists, in 2012, Iran stood as the second most prolific jailer of reporters. This may have to do with the state's general banning of media that criticizes government policies or addresses the effect of international sanctions, among other topics. You're looking at the evolution of uh, citizen journalism. It's uh, when, you, when you give these tools of real-time communication, uh, you're able to now see all this information come in. The government has gone as far as arresting Ali Akbar Javanfekar, advisor to the president on the grounds that he published content that contradicted Islamic ideals. They will do everything they can to control the election, to control how the media will cover the election. Number five, China. Getting kicked out for not reporting the news in a way that makes China look good? Well, China, looks like you're in need of some new American journalists who are willing to play ball. Known for its prolific imprisonment of journalists, the People's Republic of China is not shy about its desire to control media output. We're looking at a new government trying to come in, assert its authority, and um, and really set, uh, set new rules for the media. The government has gone as far as interrupting reporters in public, having them dragged away, and causing other inconveniences in their work. Additionally, visas are said to have been delayed purposefully to punish foreign journalists for their negative coverage of China. And so what they do is they, they fly in to a, a place, they try to go in as quietly as possible, try to write up their story as fast as they can before any kind of ban or political pressure comes. Number four, Iraq. He was killed because the security forces don't value life and they think they can do what they want. From 1992 to 2015, a total of 168 reporters are confirmed to have been killed in the nation of Iraq. Things have not improved over the years, especially with the start of the Iraqi Civil War and the rise of the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, or ISIS. The factions fighting on the ground have since taken their battle to the airwaves. The government, ISIL, and others all want to control the story. Aside from existing black hole areas from which members of the press cannot report, journalists have been threatened by kidnapping and death on a regular basis. Apparently, uh, they beheaded him. And uh, I can't show enough respect uh, for these reporters. Number three, Saudi Arabia. I mean, using religion as a political tool is more of an affront to Islam than anything Hamza has said. There's not being happy with criticism, and then there's imposing laws in order to quash it. Saudi Arabia's adoption of a press law amendment in 2011 leans towards the latter, with its broad wording punishing any media that could be seen as harming the country. There's a, there's a blogger in Saudi Arabia called Raif Badawi, who now has faces to, uh, uh, he's been sentenced to 10 years in, j in prison and a thousand lashes for what his, his blogs. The law also permits a certain number of courts to hear testimony against journalists and not challenge it, in the instance that the journalists lack a defense representative. To top it off, the Saudi Arabian government has even made efforts to suppress videos on YouTube. Internet rumor mongers who cause social confusion will face penalties ranging from house arrest and imprisonment to lashes and execution. Number two, Eritrea. We were restricted in a number of ways, including travel. Um, you had to uh, request a, uh, permission to travel more than 15 miles out of the capital 10 days in advance. It's said that as of the end of 2012, there were 28 reporters imprisoned in the nation of Eritrea, with nine in jail since 2001. Part of this may be tied to the fact that all media is now state-owned, with the last noted foreign correspondent expelled in 2007 and countless private media outlets shuttered six years prior. Journalists still working in Eritrea fear publishing any media critical of the nation or its policies, while others are driven to exile by the threat of jail time. I've come here with mixed feelings. Journalists aren't welcome here. It took months to get a visa. 
before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Anyone who criticizes the bad government of Javier Duarte is attacked. I had to leave because of the violence that all journalists experience there. And while I've been here, they've killed the 13th journalist in the state. Where there is democracy, the public has the right to access news. To prevent this, the state uses violence, oppression and anti-democratic laws. Russia is already one of the world's most dangerous places for journalists, a fact brought home in the early hours of Saturday morning for top newspaper reporter Alig Kashin. Seven reporters were killed in the line of duty in 2013 in Pakistan. The report has placed Pakistan at 158th position out of 180 countries on its press freedom index. I'm on the phone with Saad Mekinet from the New York Times. She and her colleague Nicholas Kulish were detained during the height of the unrest by the Egyptian secret police. Of the 130 journalists who we studied and evaluated risks for, 67 were determined to have a level of risk. The remaining had no risk. Number one, North Korea. The country's state-run television reports Laura Ling and Yuna Lee were each sentenced to 12 years in a labor prison as part of the conviction. First and certainly foremost, all news media in North Korea is produced and thus controlled by the government-operated Korean Central News Agency. What makes the situation worse is how foreign journalists are handled. They are monitored by special officials, kept away from the masses, and have their phones confiscated. Factoring in the outright jailing of reporters, the control-fixated nature of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea slowly becomes clear. 30 hours ago, Yuna Lee and I were prisoners in North Korea. We feared that at any moment we could be sent to a hard labor camp. Do you agree with our list? What do you feel are the worst countries for reporters? For more globally oriented top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Sounds fascinating, and of course, we will be following that story.